Hey, Paul. Hi, JJ. How are you? I am. I'm here. You're That's here. How I am. I'm here. I have almost successfully navigated yet another day. <laughs> well, that's a that's a win. A it win. is a win. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, no, and actually, I'm, I, oh god, what? are we going to do this? Are we going to talk over each other? Is this what we're going to do the whole episode? Every I guess that would single make it, time. Yep. I guess that would make it like every episode. I was just going to say, I'm actually uh, almost a captive audience right now. Uh, we have a, a a group of deer, some uh, adult deer and their children that have camped out. Uh, beside mm. our house and if we try and venture out the adult deers get up and like snort and stomp at us Ooh. so i guess this is just how we live now okay all right well I, I can bring my dog around and you know she could try to chase him if you want just that could like, be fun yeah just, just have him just have him have a field day right so, it'd be uh interesting to say the least but yes anyway hey who are you my name is Paul Tchaikovsky, but you all know that already because I'm a big deal. Uh, I'm a managed OpenShift black belt at Red Hat, and I'm not really a big deal. I just say that to try and make myself feel better about how sad and lonely my life really is. Well, you know. And JJ, who are you? Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm uh, JJ Asgar, and uh, I'm a developer advocate for the IBM Cloud. And this is our uh, Thursday stream where Paul and I do something cloud native um, to try to either learn something new or play around with some open source software. And this is a third stream in a series we're doing. Isn't that right, Paul? That is correct. Uh, and we are doing, what are we doing? Oh, that's right. We're making a Helm chart and we're making it for a project called Send, which is a forked dead Mozilla project for sharing files in a secure and anonymous way. Um, I mean, it's not like sharing Linux ISOs on, you know, Napster or anything. Um, LimeWire, LimeWire. LimeWire, I'm showing my age. <laughs> uh, and oh. so, yeah, so to think about what we did, first of all, like the first week, we kind of just got uh, send working and validated that, you know, it could function on Kubernetes. Uh, it has, three components it has mm -hmm. the app itself it has redis to i guess manage a database of state uh, mm -hmm. and then it has um uh a storage backend and so that storage backend can just be a local directory or it can be something like s3 mm -hmm. and so the next time we got the basic app running in using helm as the installer and then last week we started hooking up storage. Yes. And so we got a persistent volume working. We stole a bunch of uh, templating from some Bitnami charts because that's how we roll. Yep. Uh, and we actually did a, a create and delete and then create again and the storage remained uh, active and valid. So we kind of confirmed that we were at a point where we had not just persistent storage, but some amount of uh, fault tolerance. Yep. And that's about as far as you might need to go if you're just doing this on like a, a home lab or something, because you probably don't have access to object storage. But we thought our next step would be to maybe hook it up with object storage, probably just S3. We don't need to try and make it work on every cloud, uh, initially at least. Uh, so we need to put in some, some variables about the type of storage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm thinking, we have a couple of spots where we're putting uh, credentials or other stuff into environment variables just in the manifest themselves. And so I think a stretch goal might be to move them to be uh, config maps and or secrets, Ooh. especially with S3, because we don't want to just be embedding S3 credentials into, um, uh, into the manifests themselves. So for the people who don't know at home, what is a config map? Oh boy. So a config map is basically a, it's a Kubernetes uh, resource uh, that is a list of key value pairs. And so those key value pairs can be injected into a pod uh, and it can be injected into the pod in one of two ways as environment variables 
or as uh, files in a directory. Mm. And so what's interesting is if you do it as files in a, in a directory, you basically have the key as the file name and the value is the contents of the file. So you can actually do things like store uh, config files or uh, TLS certificates in config maps. Uh, and secrets are more or less the same thing. Uh, it's just they are uh, base64 encoded and there's a little bit more protection from the Kubernetes um, our back systems and stuff to try and reduce the chances of somebody who shouldn't be accessing your secrets, accessing your secrets. Uh, they're not right. encrypted in etcd, but they are almost always encrypted on disk because I would at least hope that all of our Kubernetes providers are doing uh, uh, encryption at rest. You can enable etcd uh, encryption um, while it's running, uh, but it comes at quite a steep performance hit. And so for the general, the general consensus is if you have etcd encrypted at rest, uh, and then you have good RBAC controls over your secrets, you're in a pretty good place. And you're at about the same place you would be if you had, say, an app running on a VM and you had a config file that is only available to that app's user or to the root user with passwords in it, mm. right? If you need more than that, you're probably already using something like HashiCorp Vault, and there are ways to integrate your app or Kubernetes with HashiCorp Vault. Nice. So... The level of secrets we're dealing with are pretty low benign. level secrets, yeah. pretty benign. Um, so I'm cool to just use config maps and secrets where appropriate. But it might be a fun stream. This so uh, total aside, and we're probably jabbering on too much, but there is uh, there are CSI drivers. So CSI is like the Kubernetes um, uh, like container storage like API plugin system. Mm -hmm. So you can bring your own storage. Uh, and there are Kubernetes CSI drivers for things like HashiCorp Vault, for the uh, Amazon mm -hmm. secret store, for the Azure mm -hmm. secret store. And when you use those, it will actually mount those secrets as volumes in a pod without them actually being a Kubernetes secret or Kubernetes config map. Oh, interesting. Uh, and so that's really cool because they're encrypted basically the whole way through, except for like if I'm on the, Pod, I can do a cat of a file and see it. But that's the only place it's visible is in the pod runtime. Mm. And the downside to that is you have to do a lot of work in either Vault or AWS to set up the IAM credentials and stuff right to make mm. sure that only the right pods have access to the right things. So you're basically kind of shuffling the pain and suffering um, to make it a little bit more secure um, versus uh, a little bit less secure, but not as much pain and suffering and as far as getting all the bits lined up correctly. Uh, and so I've found a lot of interest in this CSI drivers right up until the point people realize now they need to like either manage all this stuff for the developers or they need to be able to expect their developers to know how to manage doing IAM roles and rules and setting up users to be able to imitate other users and all this other stuff. Uh, and so nobody wants to do that. I probably feel like there's that. probably a spot where it'd be a good place for an operator to show up and make that simpler uh, mm. and become sort of part of the platform. But I'm not quite sure how I think that would need to look. And also anytime you're abstracting a security thing, you introduce the possibility that you, uh, you know, accidentally abstract away the actual security that's there. And so you might just make it as insecure as secrets. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. So um, that's, so, is, is there any is there any chat going on? No, no. The no? Okay. Our, little, our little chat's busted too, unfortunately. Um, but I'm watching it. But I did okay, I cool. did want to I do I did want to follow up on one question about the config map. Because this seems weird. Where the config map, you said you can inject configuration files that way, right? Right. Wouldn't that be weird to write in YAML? Because isn't it config yeah, map it, supposed to run? It is weird to write in YAML, um, but not as weird as you might think. Oh. So why don't I just go ahead and share my screen if I remember which buttons to press? Did you like that transition? Did you like how I kind of helped helped get you on the screen? That was, that was good stuff. Yeah, amazing. 
It's like I've done this. All before. right. So this <laughs> is uh, this is VS Code, and I have this. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, GitHub Copilot running. So it's probably going to help me write out a uh, a config map. And when, as I'm doing it, I can kind of show you uh, what it looks like to do a file versus a uh, environment variable. Okay. So let's start with uh, config map .yaml, and then just in case we'll create a secret .yaml too. Right, mm -hmm. but these are both empty. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to do, and I'm just going to steal them from here. Uh, and that is, I want this stanza right here. So let's stick this in the config map, uh, and then I can do a config map, mm -hmm. uh, and then here I can do. I saw right. that Dotto completion there. It was like, oh, right. you're in the secret. That was that was neat. That was neat. So now what I should be able to do, so let's let's have a look at um let's have a look at config map first. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of oh look, it's trying to offer me a um an app. Uh, uh, yeah, nice. See? It's trying to say, hey, yeah. you should do this. No, I, I don't want I don't want that though. <laughs> so ordinarily a lot of resources have a spec, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have in config maps, we go straight to data. And so if I'm just passing keys and values, uh, and actually let's look at our stateful set and let's look at our uh, environment variables. Let's actually just grab these. Mm -hmm. I might as well construct these as we're talking about it. Seems reasonable. Um, and so we paste these in. Now, the way it looks in the manifest is different to how we want it here. So I'll just sort of come in and fix it. Right. Support 8080. Uh, Redis password. Redis boost. Oh, uh, hey, we uh, we got a question here from uh, Andreas Basher. Uh, hi, I wasn't following from the start. Can you please share which stack is being used? So what, what are we trying to do here, Paul? Oh, yeah, let's go back to that, shall we? Uh, so we have this app right here uh, called Send, which is a fork of what I, is, I think, a dead Mozilla project. Mm -hmm. Um, and send is basically a way to share files in a somewhat secure method. So it's basically a web service and you click a button, upload a file, and you say, I want to allow up to 100 people to download this over six days, right? And so it will allow people, you'll then have a link to share or a, I think it has a um, QR code. And you can mm -hmm. share that with people and they can download your file after X number of downloads or X amount of times, it will become invalidated and people won't be able to download it anymore. Uh, and uh, that's basically it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things going on. Oh my God, my, my laptop wants to restart. No, thank you. <laughs> um, there's a Redis database and there is also whatever your storage is, which can be just files on disk or it can be S3 or Azure files or whatever you want. So that's what we're deploying. Uh, we're deploying them to just a, uh, Vanilla-ish Kubernetes, so uh, mm -hmm. IBM Container Service, IKS, uh, because you have to pronounce container with a K. It's actually a Kubernetes service. It's not container anymore. Oh, they finally fixed it. Yay. Yeah, yeah they did. Good for them. Uh, and so basically, we in a previous episode, we kind of got the basics working, and now we're doing some cleanup work. And we are going to uh, add support for doing S3 storage as well as a local PVC. So uh, right now we're just converting. We had environment variables in a um, in in the stateful set manifest uh, where we're declaring the pods, uh, and we're just moving them to be in the uh, config maps and secret as appropriate, right? Uh, and Perfect. so I'm just copying and pasting the right bits in. 
host and then file the or mount path. Space there. So that's all of those variables. And then we want to grab this one right here. Because mm -hmm. uh, that should be a uh, secret. We have two options here. Uh, we got a follow-up, which was, oh, great. Thank you for that. Uh, so this is more of a close to a deployment process. I think that's the safe thing to say. We are trying to, you can just take the container and shove this up into the internet if you want. But as we build the Helm chart out here, as Paul's working it on, um, this is a structured way to be able to turn the knobs and dials to get a real production level deployment of this application. That is correct. So in my config map, I have two ways of presenting uh, keys and values. Mm -hmm. I have, so did I say config map? I meant secret. Yes. Secret. Uh, I have data and string data. And let me show you um, what the difference is. And that is uh, the 64 ank. Right? So that's the difference right there. When I use data, I have to pre-base64 encode it. Whereas when I use string data, I will let it base64 encode as it gets passed to the Kubernetes API. So it's always One stored. One more time. So when I use string data, mm -hmm. I just literally do keys and values. If yes, I do okay. data, I do keys and then I do base64 encoded values. And the B64ENC, that is coming from the Go templating? This is the Go templating. So it's, this, yes. it's the same variable either way, but mm -hmm. I need it to process through a base64 encode if I use it with data, okay. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and that, that is what we'll do. We will do it that way. Um, you gonna enable SSL there for us? Right? <laughs> uh, that's it. That's that's Copilot trying to be clever. Yep. <laughs> so what we've done right now is we have moved uh, these, mm -hmm. and so now we need to do m from. We can call these, and this is where I need to remember how to do. Um, Isn't it just like config map? Like file config map or something? something. Yeah. It's. Oh, look, it's trying to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think. There we there go. go. Yeah. Now, this isn't correct. This isn't correct here, uh, but we did set a name and we set the name to, be, to match exactly what we've got here. So I can just grab. So I can grab that and paste it into. Oops, sorry, I went to the wrong place. Uh, and paste it into here. Oh, where down did I, I? I lost it. I lost down, it. Down, down, down. Right there. There Values it is. Thirty-nine. Right. And then secret ref. And the same right there, right? Nice. Now, the other thing I can do is if I, there's a good chance that as the chart user, you might want to set other environment variables, right? Yeah. That seems so right. here's what I could do is I could do a couple of things. I could do env uh, and then actually it's telling me Right here, exactly what I could do. God. Yes, that's what I want. Isn't it like space or control enter to do it or whatever? Nope. 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 That's not it. Usually I can just. I, I, I can, once I start typing, I can tab it out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of doing it for me, right? So mm -hmm. that's going to take a variable called env from our values file. Mm -hmm. 
and it's just going to basically dump this with the correct indents uh, to turn out here. So, so right. does that mean we need to go into the values file now and make a little comment to make sure it's there so we don't forget yes. about it? Yes, 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 yes. Very good call. So here we can do. Um, I don't. I don't trust my my future self. Yeah. There we go. Extra end. Extra environment variables to pass to application. Shouldn't we? Search for extra env already because it doesn't come in the template. The boilerplate. Oh, did it? I thought it did. Oh, I guess I did. Hmm. Yeah. So that, in theory, should keep us in about the same state we were in. So, mm -hmm. except now we're using um, uh, the secret and config map, and they're being mapped in. Oh, that's what you were asking. You were asking about files. Mm. So if I wanted to have, um, let's just pretend those can we change the MO, Can we change the MOTD? Oh, OK. We can say, like, change MOTD or something. Let's just, let's just pretend those don't exist. Uh, and so it's files in a directory. So let's say, um, let's say I have a config file. I would do, I want to do YAML inside YAML, but let's just, <laughs> let's say it's like a, an any file, right? Mm -hmm. And then it would be like main uh, potato equals friend equals delicious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. Right. Uh, and then, so that would give me this. Mm -hmm. And right, so that's that's the file name, and this character is basically saying treat the next set of indents as a single string, mm -hmm. right? So, and it will include the character terms and stuff here. And so, if I wanted to use this config dot any, I would come back to my stateful set, uh, and where I have volume mounts, um, I believe I would do. Hang on, I think I need to do is volumes. Config, config map. Doesn't have to be, yeah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I can do things like only pick a particular key or uh, some mm. other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I can like rename a key to put a, a key thing into a different file name and some other stuff like that. But I'm actually going to pull that out because we're not actually going to use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Control Z it out. Right. Uh, and then I'll undo all of this. Nice. Um, so the other thing is I, I actually I could have done um, I could have done the if extra ends here mm. uh, in the config map instead of doing it in the um, manifest yeah. either way uh, and then the way I did um, the way I did this secret was to just I, I'm just going to mount that entire config map worth of keys and values mm -hmm. I could also specifically say um uh, uh name a friend value from key ref some reason it's messing with my tabs hmm Sort of pop my way through here, uh, Got it. and then I can specify the particular key, etc. But again, that's not what we're trying to do here, so we won't uh, confusing that even more. So we've got that under control now. Let's go ahead and make sure we are still in a deployable state. Mm -hmm. uh, we still need crypto names. 
Create the namespace, don't forget. I think I may have already uh okay, get an I think I already created the next base just to save us some trouble. Yep. Oh, my bad. Um we got nothing in here though. Nope. If it ever actually runs. Just thinking about it. it you that you wanted some coffee. Right. Took a long time to say uh nothing to see here. <laughs> so I can do helm install my namespace send, call it send and my local helm chart. Mm -hmm. Assuming I didn't screw anything up, which I did. That's not good. One... Uh, got map expected array. Um, oh, I think it might just be it wants this. Hmm. This doesn't work. We'll read the docs. That seems reasonable. Nope. Right, row. Got map name. expected array. What and from unknown, unknown field from name. name. Config map ref name. May actually, you know what? Maybe it's just. Let's read the docs. Let's read the docs. La 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 la. Kubernetes. Um, config map from. Uh, and in from I think that map looks map. the same. Oh, oh, that's why. Hmm. YAML. YAML, YAML, YAML became a oh. such uh, uh oh this is just end of itself. Um does it need a no? Uh let me think. If nothing's there, it should be fine, right? Because we don't have anything there. It should be. Let's just go ahead and um, yeah. Let's get to working state, then we can come back. Let's comment this out, and maybe if we have time, we'll come back and fix it. Yeah. We're just not quite getting it right. Uh, oh, I bet. Um, where was it here? Oh, this is using two YAML. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, that's right. Whatever. Um, it's okay. It's if we have time, we'll come back and look at it. Uh, could not find expected. Really? Line 41. 41. Secret ref. Uh, that's all right oh i think mm. i think there's something really stupid here like it's like that or something mm. Oop. Yep. okay so let's try let's try that is there a dry run? I'm not fine. So it's still an error. It's still, uh, maybe it's not line 41 of this file. Maybe it's another one. Ugh. No, I was saying stateful set. Was it? Oh, yeah, bad. Not bad. All right, let me get rid of that. Like line forty one's commented out. Yeah, it's if it's doing it post rendering, the line numbers mm. won't quite match up. Oh, that's dumb. 
Oh, that's so well, dumb. Kubernetes can't know. Yeah, I guess. Um, Stop doing that, Paul. Okay, let's just double check here. Oh, that's the other way. And from config map ref. Okay, let's just copy this. Of course, it's going to mess with my stuff, but it's still going to at least get this right. Yeah. So I think for sure it's something else is missing. Where else did we make a change? Don't remember. This is our only change. All right. So what we can do, whoops, is Helm template dash n send send dot uh, yaml. Mm -hmm. Period. Oh. Wow. Oh, so this isn't a. Oh wait, so use did that. Use dash. So this is what we're supposed. No, that's fine. So this is pre-rendering. Could not find expected. Error converting YAML to JSON. YAML line forty-one. All right. I'm just going to comment that out. Okay. Here on this. Right. We actually have something going on above this. What on earth is going on here? It's got to be a spacing problem. Can you show the dots? Is there a way to see the dots? Mm. spaces? <laughs> Every Winks is telling you to show the dots. Right. <laughs> how do you how do you show the dots? Yeah, I don't even know how to do it. Um, why? The security context one. Do you need a dash on that one? Oh, okay. Um, wait, where did I put? Jan, we got rid of that. Uh, sorry, which one? Uh, if you scroll up a little bit, uh, yeah, 33 right there. Um, 34. Does that need a and does any be a dash there on that one? No, no, that's fine. Oh, okay. And this was this was working when we walked away from it. Oh, that's true. That is true. Last week. So it's gotta be something we've just added. Um and only so, if we actually use git correctly. <laughs> right? All right, so I've just undone everything we had. And now I can helm template. Wow. Hey, Ball, how you doing, buddy? So, env lines up, ports lines up, and then all we did was do that, and we fixed it up, and then we pulled these out, So it's gotten rid gotten rid of those completely. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and take out your pipe. See if it works. Well, that did work. Oh no! I'm saying like, did actually push it up now? No, because it won't work because we don't have the. Oh yeah, yeah. Environment variables. 
now let's bring this back to live. Uh, we have config map ref, we have secret ref. Wow. Uh, so Ball just informs us there's a non-zero chance I get to spend the weekend mucking with a custom Heroku syslog forwarder. That's a mouthful. Or at least uh, I got that. At least he's got that going for him. That sounds almost as bad as messing around with YAML for 35 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. God, I hate YAML so much. All right. So back to here. So we have containers at the same level as image, etc. We have n from config map ref special config. All right. So at the same level as images and stuff, we have that. This is this is freaking me out. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so we need to get this back here. Down to here. Save that. I have think this still works. It does. And let's create this one secret ref. Secret name. Okay, that was something weird going on with spaces or tabs or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we can go back to the Helm install, do the dry run. Ah! <laughs> just want secret, right? Maybe we can just come back to doing this. Maybe I was wrong about that. Yep, All right. there you go. I was wrong about that. Uh, okay. Wow, that was a lot of effort to get absolutely nowhere. Hey, uh, no, but... no, you've, you've you created an abstraction now that we have a little bit more flexibility in the final product. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a it was more of a distraction than an abstraction. But yes. <laughs> Right. And it is all pending. And it's all pending, I think, because it's all waiting for disks. PVCs. Yep, there we go. And, and so that'll get it that'll get it stuffed together and get going. So now while that's happening, we need to think about our storage. So first of all, I guess if we look at send. Um configuration, uh, config.js for all options. Um, here we go. S3 endpoint and S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. Looks like the, the two things we want. That seems right. Uh, there we have. Uh, so under secret, and so it values S three. Uh, Enabled. Assistance oh, that's three. enabled. And 
values persistence dot uh, type equals S3. Mm -hmm. And Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we want these to be dot values dot s3 uh, No, don't we want persistent dot s3 or something like that underneath the persistence? Uh, yeah, persistence dot s3 dot uh, bucket. bucket. Yeah. That seems logical, right? to go there and then we just copy and paste this down below what's happening in chat there i see i can see things flashing yeah um ball is telling us a great story about a nightmare of uh having to deal with dns and how elastic and heroku aren't playing off playing nice together we wanted to pull it into the the, the video so we can talk about it but unfortunately restream Stream is not allowing me to see chat inside of our things. I can bring in like captions, right? But can I bring in captions? Is that actually working? Wait, you can't, you can't see the chat? I can see the chat. Yeah, no, I actually have the stream manager over on another window. Yeah, I can see no. the chat. Weird. Yeah. So. Oh, it's all good. Doing the stupid bloody window change. Um, all right. So we have a bucket and endpoint, but we don't have credentials. Where do we get our uh, credentials? It's got to be more S3. Isn't it AWS? No. We'll, we'll get the, the main readme. Uh, Go to the Docker Docker MD right there. That was that was JJ's screen share. You got credentials. <laughs> from. Thank you very much. There should be a key one in here. Here we go. Down there. There we go. AWS secret key right there. Right there. Oh yeah. Oh, I know why that is. Because if those are set, the AWS um. Mm -hmm. um Libraries are just going to use them, so you don't even need mm -hmm. to specify them in the local config because it's kind of implied. Mm -hmm. Access key and secret access key. Key. Good enough. So here's our new things we need in values mm -hmm. under persistence. persistence. Yep. Right? Uh, and so we need a new type of S3. We put these under here. Uh, and so we have bucket and point test key ID and access key. Wait, hold on. The endpoint. Oh, that's like to make sure what, what region you put it in if you don't do global, right? I guess. So JJ, what mm. I want you to do while I'm in here is get an S3 bucket access key and secret access key mm -hmm. and put them in a second values file that I can't see. Yep. Uh, and we'll override the default values with that. And that way, 
I can keep setting this up and you can get the credentials going and hopefully we'll be ready at the same time. Sounds good. And we'll hopefully also not share your credentials with uh, the internet again. Hey, it's not a stream unless I do that at least once. Right. <laughs> um, so these are all secrets. Why don't we, what do we want to do here? So only one of these is really a secret, right? And that is the secret <laughs> access key. Whoops. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move these ones into here. And get rid of these ones. Uh, and then we need the B64 ink. And I think I changed this to the access key. So that should have our environment variable set up so that when we change our type, uh, we will get what we're expecting. And then if I remember correctly, uh, down here somewhere, uh, we are setting um, uh, what am I looking for? It says file. Yeah, it's up here. We're checking assistance is enabled and or uh, is set to file. We'll print this. Um, else we'll use this. I set the type to S3, right? Uh, in Since what? Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just checking. So I think we're, I think we've got this squared away and it should probably work. Oh, JJ, don't do it in the T Mux. The whole point oh. is so that I, the whole point is oh, so the audience can't see it. I thought you were doing, I thought you were in your, 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 what should we call it? Your, um, this, yes, this code. I didn't think you were going to, I didn't think you were going to look this, at the T-Mux. This guy, am I right? Ugh. <sighs> Classic. All right. Hang on. Wait, I just got kicked out of the T-Mux. You break close the T-Mux? Oh, oh gotcha. Jay. Back, oh, no, hang on. God damn it. This guy, he's so special. All right, it's, it's back. All right. Oh, and we're no longer in the right directly. Direction, uh, directory. Uh, so CD stream 10902, send it looks up, right? Uh, and so he's putting values into don't look values. But what I want to do is k get pods make sure our app came up uh k get service oh actually we did k get ingress right mm -hmm. oh we need to run that command to get the um the new secret and stuff for ingress remember we had to get the secret and the host name no, I don't remember this at all. I mean, we do this every single time we use the company that you work for as cloud. Oh, that's that right. That you're the advocate for. That's and right. So we got to copy that it, shit over. I would expect at some point you would remember this uh, more yeah. than I would, yep. but that's okay. Um, so let me think about what I need to do there. Hey, so I just use OpenShift. OpenShift just works. Right. Why aren't we uh, using OpenShift? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why we're, but that's a different conversation. All uh, right. So let's grab the secret. Uh, and so this right here is the secret we want. Uh, so K okay, get uh, a secret that dash O YAML to uh, kls.yaml. Um, edit this namespace. Okay, 
this to be send ki dash ftls secret okay so now i've got the secret here uh we want to come down to our values file Uh, come up to ingress uh, and oh, did we change? I think I got name? the I got the stuff set up for you. Oh, is this the same cluster name as the last one we had? So will the URL remain the same? No, oh, the hash might change. Somehow it's the same. Really? Shit, yeah. it is. Really? So it's, it hashes off the server name that I create? Because I just recreate the name, I, same I cube one over and over again. Do, do you remember what that the name, is... do you remember what the name of the, the command is to get the ingress URL again? Just to verify? Uh, IBM Cloud KS clusters. Yeah, I mean it matches. So it just takes a hash off of the name. That is not secure. <laughs> I mean, what what could possibly go wrong? It doesn't have to be secure, it just has to be unique. And if it's enforcing unique cluster names, then the secrets go. But they're out. not. You can have the same cluster name. And then and then now oh, you have there's 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 things called what, cluster IDs now. That's what this is for. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I bet you if you create one with the same name, it'll be oh, one. Zero zero one. Yep. Well, um, that's a thing. All right. But that does mean I need to do a Helm upgrade. Uh oh. Did I do, did I do something silly? No. Nine. Oh, I always forget how this stuff works. I uh, fix in config map as well. Wait, wait, you gotta bust my balls, go. Maybe. Just taking us time. Mm. All right. So if we fixed it correctly, we should be able to come to here. We should be able to come to here. We should be able to run that. And we should get send. Select files to upload. Um, let's upload Paul in a red hat. We've done that one before, but it's an easy one. Spires after five downloads. Upload. Copy this link. Paste this link. Here's my file. I can hit download and voila. Yay. So that is it working, still using the file method, which 
is not what we want right now. We want S3. JJ, did you add everything you think yes. you needed? I believe All I got right. it right in, in that file. So I think because we're going to switch from S3, from files to S3, we'll mm -hmm. probably need to like clean this fully and redeploy, including the PVCs. Otherwise, it's going to try and reuse the Redis database that's pointing at the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and right? delete it. And let's just let's just try try it once. We're coming up to the the top of the hour here, so let's just do it. Let's just try to roll the dice once to see if it works. If it doesn't, it's a great place for us to start next week. All right. So K okay, get all. We should see things start terminating. K okay, get PVC. Uh, we have to. We probably have to wait until it's fully terminated. Now, I think by default, uh, it's not going to de delete the PVCs uh, because I think Helm tries to protect us from ourselves, mm. uh, which is can be useful. Um, is, there a, is there an argument for PVCs? I can't remember. There's, there's some reason that either Helm or Kubernetes doesn't def delete the PPCs by default. Um, any pod running, K get PPC, K delete PPC, K mm -hmm. get PPC. Yay. So if JJ didn't screw up, we have some extra var variables in don't look values. Mm -hmm. uh, and JJ, you just modified it. So only persistence enabled is true, then type is S3, and then the four credentials, right? That is correct. All right. Let's hope you got it right. So Helm install blah, and then we're going to add values, don't look values. Wow, wow. Volumes. Unknown field volumes. So stateful set. Mm, stateful set. Volumes. This should be correct. Okay. What this is doing is it switched from using the volume claim template to using volumes, mm. right? Which is what we want it to do because we want this to mm -hmm. just be an empty, empty dir. Um, Mm. We want to take for six. Oh, is that because it no? Uh, Kubernetes stateful set volumes. Interesting. Faithful set volume empty dir. That seems consistent, right? Oh, I know what I know what the deal is here. It's in the wrong place. Mm. Uh, this 
should be up here. Oh, yeah, because the file. Oh, we know. Because okay. it's part of the pod spec, not the staple set pod. Not the staple set. Mm. Uh, and then this needs to be if. Right, so these two should negate each other, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so if either of these, we want volumes. Otherwise, we want this. I think that's what we want. What? Oh, so close. This is since type is type, a method that a... has arguments. Do I need to put it in quotes? Do I not put it in quotes or something? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, but the type is not in quotes. Too bad. Fix? Again. Yep. Type is not a method, but has arguments. Uh, stateful set 7649. Oh. My bad. That was all me. Okay, so K get PVC. But we know that now only have two PVCs. That's a good is what sign. We want. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so K get send. K get pods. K edit. Pod send zero. Don't show my key. It won't show it. It's in the config map in the secret. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. Right? Nice. This is the whole point. Yeah. This is why we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, security context. What was I going to look for? Yeah. So there we go. The volumes is correct. It's an empty dir data. Um, uh, to take it out, and we can okay, get the pods. Let's see if we're running yet. Almost. Now, I think we're going to have the issue that, oh, I'm not sure what those logs are telling us. Some sort of... Oh, it's pro I think oh, it's trying to do... Some sort uh... of... The health check. Yeah. Um, okay, get pods. Okay, just five pods sandwiches. Uh, has unbound. PVC. PVC. That's a new one. It doesn't. Oh, no, it's, it's, there we go. it's coming up. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up. It's just a little slower than I'm expecting. Now, remember we had that issue with um, send coming up before Redis was ready? Mm -hmm. uh, and causing issues. So I don't know if we ended up Fixing that because we were we talked about adding a uh, readiness probe, re liveness probe, because uh, the liveness one will restart it if it's not mm -hmm. if the back end's not up and it's not ready. Uh, so we didn't do that. So we may need to once Redis is going, which it seems to. Let's just do k delete pod seven zero. I, could, I should have done actually a, a rollout, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Near enough is good enough. So leveraging the schedule for what it's supposed to do. Yep. It's like, hey, there's no pod here. There should be. Let me go start one. Desired state at its best.
So, JJ, I think we're at the point where you should put this up on GitHub. Uh, ingress. I don't think because I don't think there's anything else we really need to do to call this basically ready, apart from write a readme, which uh, you can probably throw together real quick. Um, so let's come back to here. Let's delete some of these. Let's refresh this. So it's saying that it's there. Uh, I can access it. So let's try to put a file there. Um, I'll, go look, we'll I'll look put, at the bucket, see if it actually writes to the bucket. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, this up there just to be something different. Uh, five downloads, upload, something went wrong. Take it, pods, okay, log, dash f, send, zero. Oh. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if it gave us a, a useful error? Agreed. So something went wrong. Um, I'm just going to pull this out so I can look at um, AJ's got look values. You didn't base 64 encode them or anything, did you? No. Uh, dude, I hate you so much. What do I do? Endpoint. Why did you put a region? Is that what the readme said? Did I don't. I, think, I, read that I right? don't think. I don't think so. Optional custom endpoint to use for S three. Okay, so we only need that if it is um if it's not amazon a standard one. Oh. yeah or if maybe we could construct a appropriate um endpoint if it's not the standard region um so i'm going to go ahead and do this by values Empty and do a uh, home upgrade values. Values now that has updated the environment variables, mm -hmm. but it didn't update the it did that does it doesn't know to restart the application. Correct. So we just kill the pot again. Okay. So we just kill the pot again. Exactly. So we can actually do this uh, rollout state uh, restart state or set send. That's the way I should restart um, stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit cleaner than just deleting pods. Uh, and while that is running, while that is doing the restart, uh, I was going to mention here. Uh, we can do under um, under here. We can do annotations. We can do this. Config. Uh, Some I can't remember the exact way you do it, but it's something like this. Um, oh, so then when that changes, it creates a new. So checksum. when that changes, like, this is different. Yep. yep, yep. Exactly, the, and that makes the annotation change, and the annotation changing tell, tells it to yep. uh, re-roll. That so that's one of. That's one of Helm's cool little tricks to 
force app restarts on config map or secret change. Uh, but let's see where we're at here. Okay, we have our pod is now running again. So let's have a look. We'll refresh. Select file to upload. Uh, doesn't matter what. Five downloads. Upload. All right. Encrypted and ready to send. So if we click here. Download file. Download. Boom. Now, JJ, can you confirm? I'm confirming. Hang on. Oh, yep. There it is. All right. Sweet. It works. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, I, I, I'm not saying we should do it right away, but AWS Redis service. Oh, clever. Uh, that's what it is, Elasticash. So we could use uh, Elasticash or we could use uh, Redis Enterprise to spin up a Redis in the cloud and not use our um, embedded Redis. And that way it'll persist even if we shut everything down because it's running mm -hmm. in the Amazon one. And then we could use Amazon backups, restores and stuff like that. So that's probably the the last thing you would do if you were getting really serious about running this in a production capacity is tie it mm -hmm. back to a, a real enterprise Redis versus just the garbage one we run inside of Kubernetes. But sure. otherwise, this is something that you could add a readme to a license file and JJ, you could publish it to GitHub and then you could go to Artifact Hub and add it as a Helm chart that JJ maintains. And anyone well, looking for a Helm chart for send would end up with the Helm chart that you have built for us. Yep. And it's good stuff, man. That's uh, the, the, I think eventually before publishing this, I'd prefer if we get some CI or CD or CI around it. Yes. So we can test, well, I, have it tested or something. I mean, sure. But like, you know, you still want to get it. I mean, if you're going to do CI, you're going to do that with GitHub Actions. If you do GitHub Actions, you need to put it in GitHub in order to test it. So ah, good point. Good point. You can at least point. get it into GitHub, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, and in yeah. fact, may, maybe that's uh, what we can talk about next week is actually using the the Helm community tools to create mm. uh, a Helm repository uh, using GitHub Pages and using their GitHub Actions. And yeah. sort of automate the because that also they also have a te there's also a testing there's a chart testing and chart release uh, action, so we can implement and testing it, it, and stuff yeah. very easily. It's uh it's changed significantly since we looked at it last, so it might actually be worth going through that refresher. Sure. Open software, open software, open source software moves pretty quickly. So, it does you know, indeed. We gotta, so we got to keep up with it. All right, so we got a plan for next week. Awesome. All right. All right. Say bye, Paul. Bye, Paul.